The definition of the word negotiate that I wish to use today is to find a way over or through an obstacle or a difficult path. To negotiate. Finding a way over or through a difficult path. I want to appreciate the very fine couple that so rightly and so kindly uh, followed my request. I, I think it's just big of you. I think it's class. Amen. Had you not, I wasn't going to say anything else, but it's classy when people will do what is right. Because people don't mean harm. And then if you, I didn't blow them up, just... Kindly child. And then they make the adjustment. That's wonderful. That's better than sometimes I see some saints do. The word hit them and they just fold their arms. I can see them sometimes grabbing their grip. I'm getting ready to go. I, I can't believe this. You're going to be judged by it. Do you know when you stand before the Lord, my sermons, you're going to hear me preaching. And God's going to ask you, why didn't you listen to Wooden? Jesus said that. He said to his disciples, I'm praying for you and I'm praying for all of those who will get saved through your words. Oh, you, oh, what I'm telling you, hey, this is eternal work. You're going to have to, you, how you respond to this is judgment. You can dismiss me, you can walk away from it, but you're going to see me again. You're going to see the preacher again. The truth is like that. I feel trapped. You are. Finding a way over, let me preach fast, or through an obstacle or a difficult path. This is so important because remember the last time I preached to you about the world, I said that Jesus said in his prayer to the Father for the twelve and in extension for us, Jesus prayed this prayer. He said, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil of the world. Jesus prayed that we not be taken out of the world. And, and you know, I gave you a strong definition of the world the last time the world represents the sum of the demonic human philosophy of life it corresponds with the the german word uh, zetjes uh, which is the spirit of the age eon and has been well described the world as that floating mass of thoughts opinions maxims speculations hopes, impulses, aims, aspirations at any time current in the world, which it may be impossible to seize and to accurately define, but which constitutes a most real and effective power, being the moral or immoral atmosphere which at every moment of our lives we inhale and exhale. Uh, these are the words of John MacArthur. And also my wife, I thought, did a tremendous job giving the definition of the world. Uh, she said that the world, um, Jesus having lived on earth, Jesus knew that the main thing that the world would hinder us from is glorifying God would hinder us from glorifying God with our life and work here on earth. The thing that would hinder us would be the evil that is in the world, which has to do with the world's culture, its belief systems, 
It's standards. It's and behaviors that are antithetical to the beliefs and values that we subscribe to from the word of God. And what makes the world's culture so evil is that it's highly contagious, it's highly contagious nature. It's ability to infect, to contaminate, and to be transferred to others. Demas left God, Paul said in 2 Timothy 4 and 10, having loved this present world. The world is a challenge. It is that difficult obstacle, that path that we've got to find a way through and a way over. We've got to negotiate it since Jesus prayed that the Father would not take us out of the world. Then we must find a way over and through these difficult obstacles. Remember that our Lord said in John 17 and 9, I pray not for the world. He said in John 17 and 11, but these are in the world. In John 17 and 16, as he says, they are not of the world. Just the, to name a few things that Jesus said about the world. All of these things, and yet we are down here. And let's look at what Jesus said. Turn to John's gospel, chapter 16 and verse 33. Jesus said this about the world and our relationship with the world. And he taught us that we must, amen, claim the, our position as conquerors. He said, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. For in the world you shall have tribulation. You see that? But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He said, these things have I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have irene. That is, you might be tranquil. It is not the will of God for the saints to lose their mind. Hallelujah. But for us to have tranquility in the world, in the cosmos, you shall have tribulation. The truth is living down here, crushing things will happen to you. Christianity is not, uh, is not immunity from challenges. When, when bad things happen to good people. He says in this world, you, as a believer, you will be pressed. Tribulation. As a believer, you will have trouble. As a believer, you will at times be afflicted. Being saved does not uh, give us immunity from these things. But then he says, but be of good cheer. That is, have courage. Have courage, for I have overcome the world. Overcome, the Greek word is Nike, which literally means I have prevailed. I am victorious. I've won. And, and since Jesus have prevailed and Jesus is in us, then whatever we are facing, we don't have to fall apart. We can be at peace because the overcomer is on the inside of us. And if he has overcome, then you can overcome. Oh, there's so much going on that I don't know what to do. Yes, you do. Overcome. Be of good courage. Take courage. Be of good cheer. For Jesus says, I have overcome the world, and I am in you. There has to be a negotiation. Because we must use the world. Praise the Lord. Without being conformed to the world. You remember Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, where Paul warns, and be not conformed to this world. Where conform is interesting. It says to, to be conformed is to be fashioned alike. Amen. To conform to the same patterns. Dealing with, you know what that's dealing with? Outward patterns. Outward patterns. Be careful with your styles. Be careful with what you wear. What you put on. How you cut your hair. Praise the Lord. Men and women. Guys, be careful that your style is not feminine. And women, be careful that your style is not butch. There was a time that we believed that crew cuts were for men. 
And there was a time that we believed that earrings were for women. Look at everything now, it's all messed up. And we get these things from the world. The world. The world sets the style. The Christian wants to look like a rapper. The sanctified woman wants to look like a player. Oh my. Saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. And, and that with a mighty burning fire. Wearing those yoga pants. For the, for, for the world to see. And there you go, vavoom, vavoom. Showing that big booty. Where'd you get it from? The world. I'm too, I'm too frank for most. I can see him now trying to find the door. I got to leave. I have at least two to walk out on me every Sunday. Well, last Sunday, lady, I think if she had a gun, she would have shot me. And all I was preaching was God's truth. Men are being, I'm not saying that every man is becoming a homosexual, but our men are becoming feminized. The style now is for men to be feminine, for men to be weak. Oh, my, to, to be soft. I don't, I, I, sometimes I feel that I was born at the wrong time. God said, no, you, you born at the right time. Those big, tough, strong Rugged white men. I was I was introduced. I was introduced uh, by the ex wrestler Nikita Koloff. I never thought while watching him with that clothesline, that Russian sickle, that the day would come that I'd be on a program and Nikita Koloff would introduce me to preach. Nikita said, What well, I like about Bishop Wooden is he said that God didn't save men. To make them soft. That's right, God didn't call us to be softies. God called us to be men. You don't have to be a bodybuilder. But you ought, to, you ought to be strong. Some of you guys, are you got strong physical bodies, but you got weak minds. Seems like to me you struggle with things that you ought not to struggle with. You can bench press 300 pounds, but you can't think your way through. Things that shouldn't vex you, vexes you. Strength is not just physical. Strength, true strength, is mental and spiritual. A man who is mentally and physically strong is a much stronger man than a brute that can lift a car. Let me preach. We, I want to warn you, we can't, we're in the world, but we can't be conformed to the world. Praise the Lord. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. If you haven't said amen before, you really won't say it now. But 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 9 says, I wrote unto you in an epistle, either as a part of this particular letter, or a letter that we do not have. He says, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to keep company with fornicators. What does that word mean? Sexually immoral people. Adulterers. People who have sex before marriage. People who have sex with each, the same sex. Fornication covers homosexuality, lesbianism, bestiality. Incest, all kinds of sexual immorality. He says, I, I wrote to you, I told you you wouldn't say amen. I wrote unto you that you not keep, not to company, not to associate with, with fornicators. And he says this, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world of this cosmos or with the not only fornicators the covetous that is the greedy people who can't have enough oh they, are, they always got to have more we live in a society now where greed 
is admired. Oh, so and so, we just admire them because they're driven. They're never satisfied with what they have. They want more and more and more, and they, we admire that trait as covetousness. There comes a time that you ought to tell the Lord, thank you. There's a time when I want me a cup of coffee, I'm going to sit down and tell the Lord, thank you for what you've done for me. I don't run around and uh, just every time I look around, I got to have this, I got to have that, I got to have this. No, 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 you can't live like that. Mm -mm. There's something to be said for being appreciative for your station in life. Most people don't get this anymore. Everybody, you know, it just, it, it's admired now. More, more, more. Folk lose their wives, lose their families and everything over covetousness. And covet the, those, those who are guilty of covetousness aren't just the rich. Poor people covet. To covet is to want that which belongs to someone else. It is to want more and more and more. He says not only fornicators, uh, but um, uh, with covetous. With extortioners, the extortioner is the swindler. Or idolaters, people who serve false gods. He says, but the only way that we cannot associate with them, he says, for then must ye needs to go out of the world. He says to keep from keeping company with them altogether. You got to leave the cosmos. You got to leave the world. And, and you don't have that option. Because Jesus prayed, says, I pray that you not take them out of the world. But see, you see the negotiation. Says, we can't leave. Are you praying for me? Says, we can't leave. He says, but now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or a covetous or an idolater. Or a railer, that is, an abuser. He beats his wife. He's a fighter. Or a drunkard. Or an extortioner. With such a one, no not to eat. What verse 11 does to the, this is for the Bible student here. This is not for the regular people. Verse 11 gives clarity to what Paul was saying in verse 9. For in verse 9, Paul says, I wrote to you not to keep company with fornicators. Well, if verse 9 stands by itself, then ver verse 10 would tell us that in order to obey verse 9, since we're surrounded by fornicators, there are immoral people everywhere, we got to leave the planet. And we can't do that. So what he does here in verse 11, he explains himself. He says, but now I have written to you not to keep company with fornicators. He says, what, I, what I'm saying is, follow me now. It's going to get quiet in here. If any person is called, a, who is called a believer, be a fornicator. That is, if any of your Christian or Christian, as some people say, brothers and sisters, be fornicators, covetous, swindlers, thieves, be uh, a drunkard. And they name the name of Christ. Said those are the ones that I'm talking about. So I want to make I, I want to make it clear. See how, see how quiet you are. He says here, for what have I to do? To judge them that are without. He says, I don't pass, I don't judge the lost, the not saved. They're not saved. Sinners are going to be fornicators. A sinner is going to be a covetous person, an idolater. Well, I don't want to do any business with a sinner if I find out that the sinner is uh, a covetous person or an idolater. Well, you might not be able to get your car fixed. You may not be able to find a doctor. Praise the Lord. You may not be able to get what you need because sinners sin. Y'all looking at me. Paul said, for what have we to do to judge them also that are without? 
do not ye judge them that are within? He says, we don't judge those who are lost. He says, we place this requirement on the believer. See, the saints should hold each other to a high standard. He said, but them that are without, God judges. God's going to get them. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. That is, if there's a member in here who have decided that they're just not going to live right. Now, this is not, because I know where you're headed, this is not a Galatians 6 and 1. Galatians 6 and 1 says, Brethren, if you find a brother overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual, go to them in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest you also be tempted. That's a brother or a sister who has fallen, who was overtaken, who were overwhelmed. They found themselves in sin. You found out about that sin. You don't put them on front street. You go to them in a spirit of meekness, considering yourself, because every one of us have fallen to something at one time or another. Maybe they didn't find out about it. Maybe nobody knew. But you go to them. You don't, you don't expose them. You go in a spirit of meekness, and you go considering yourself, wanting them to treat you. You're treating them the way you would want them to treat you. Had it been you, for it could have been you, but nobody found out. So you go to them, in a certain way. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the brother who have, or the sister who have just decided, we ain't gonna live right. We are going to fornicate. We are going to cheat. This is what we're going to do. This is our new lifestyle. We don't care what the church preach. We don't care what the teachings are. This is what we're going to do, no matter what. The Bible says when you find out that a person is like that, the Bible says, don't even take them to McDonald's. Don't fellowship with them. Don't go to the movies with them. Leave them alone. See, because you're trying to win them back. And a whole lot's at stake. See, once you name the name of Christ, everybody looks at you differently. Sergeant Colonel Borkin, a great general, a great general, General Borkin, a great general said uh, that when he was uh, being trained, uh, he said he thought that his commanding officer hated him because his commanding officer was so hard on him. Only to find out that what happened was the commanding officer heard that the general, before he became a general, claimed salvation. <clears throat> so once he claimed salvation, the commanding officer uh, really uh, made it hard on him and the commanding officer told him brother James he said the reason I was so hard on you is that you said that you were a Christian right. he said I'm accustomed to seeing men who claim to be Christians coming out of the whole house I'm accustomed to seeing men soldiers who claim to be Christians when the pressure is on handling the pressure just like everybody else. I'm accustomed to seeing Christ soldiers who claim to be Christians cussing and carrying on just like everyone else. So I made it hard on you to, make, to see if I could break you because my assumption was, was that you were just like all of those other Christians. Only to find out that this man was a, Christ a true Christian. And when, press when the pressure was on, he didn't cuss. He didn't go to the whole house. When he had an opportunity to drink, he didn't take the drink. He stood for the Lord. You'd be surprised. You think that just that they're just pressuring you because you're black. Because that's 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 every that's, that's I mean that's it. That's the only reason why we have problems. I mean, what other reason could anybody have to make life a little more difficult for us except that we're black? Every oh my god, everything. But sometimes it's because people have heard you name the name of Christ and they want to see, are you for real? Now, my question is, did you pass the test or did you fail the test? 
Y'all might well get with me. I'm, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to wrap this up. See, you, when you name the name of Christ, amen, we've got to hold each other to a higher level. Got to hold each other, preach wooden, to a higher level. The world is going to be the world. We are not to be conformed to the world. And we are to uh, uh, be different from the world. Do you see the negotiation? Now, in our text, Paul wanted them to understand that uh, there is something that believers, this is going to be hard, this, this is a tough sermon Sunday to preach today because I keep getting deeper. Paul, uh, in dealing with negotiating the world, praise the Lord, in dealing with our, social, our being social and mixing with believers and non-believers and how to contend. There, there is a principle uh, in the Bible that, that, that's called, I won't get many amens, uh, the remain as you are principle. See, because nobody wants to remain as they are. Everybody wants something else. We're the most unsatisfied people I ever, I've ever seen. The married want to be divorced. The single want to be married. Uh, the, praise the Lord, devotional leader wants to be an elder. The elder wants to be a pastor. The pastor wants to be a superintendent. Superintendent wants to be a bishop. The man wants to be a woman. The woman wants to be a man. Everybody now seems to me they want something else. You better learn how to be content with such things as you have. For God have said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I thank God for a level of contentment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For contentment. Godliness. With. Contentment is great gain. Thank you. He says here in this principle, he introduces it, praise the Lord, in uh, chapter number seven. I'm, I'm, I, I got to close now because it's taking me too long. He talks about these virgins and he goes to this principle. Look at verse uh, 17. Somebody hook me up. I, I got too happy. I got sweat all over my glasses. Now I can't see a thing. Verse 17 says, But as God hath distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called everyone, so let him walk. And so ordain I in all the churches. As God has distributed you, as God has ordained you. How God found you. Where God has placed you. The Bible says, so let him walk. He says, is anything, is any man called being circumcised? He's a, he's a Jew. Then let him not become uncircumcised. Is any man called in uncircumcision? Then let him not be circumcised. Why? Because circumcision is nothing. And uncircumcision is nothing. But the keeping of the commandment of God, whether you are Jew or Gentile, white or black, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is whether or not you're living holy. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. If God saved you and uh, you were working a particular job, as long as it's not immoral, Bible says, let him abide in that same call. Art thou called being a servant? Did the Lord save you as a servant? He says, don't worry about it. King James says, care not for it. But if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. Said so now, if God save you and you're a servant, and uh, don't get too worried, but now if the Lord set you free, go for it. For he that is called in the Lord being a servant is the Lord's freeman. And likewise also he that is called 
being free is Christ's servant. Why? Ye are bought with the price. Uh -huh. And be not ye the servants of men. This is one of the scriptures that kills slavery. We're bought with a price. Then when you can't be the servants of men. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called, therein abide with God. In your current situation. Whatever your educational level is. Whatever, wherever you live. God said, if I saved you there, he said, now learn how to be satisfied. It's not saying that you can't move up or get better, but it is saying that you got to learn to live without covetousness. Covetousness will destroy you. Amen. So he says, wherever you are, you're the Lord's servant in that place. Wasn't it good that we had uh, our leadership conference? Isn't it good that El Amanchuku was on the spot? Isn't it good that we had people ready to speak up for the Lord? Hallelujah. Had you been out of place, we would have missed an opportunity to shape the way people think. The Bible said now, Paul says now, you wrote to me, you had a question about virgins. Let's, let's go home, Brother Clarence. He said you had a question about virgins. That is, engaged young women. That's what the question was all about. He says, I want to respond to you Praise the Lord concerning what you wrote to me about. He says, now concerning young ladies of marrying age, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment as one that have attained mercy from the Lord. And he, what he does is he continues the stay as you are principle. He says, I suppose therefore, you all hear me? I suppose therefore that this is good for the present distress, that a man so, uh, uh, that I say that it is good that a man so be, so to be. He says concerning the current situation, it's good if you remain as you are. Oh Lord, he says, uh, are thou bound to a wife? Talking to you married folk here. Seek not to be loose from her. You may as well let God work on your roaming eye. Because if you have a wife, praise the Lord, you need to look at her and stop trying to figure out how to get out. But make the most of it. I can't get any help. You know, this is one of those Sundays. That is a, is a Sunday where you don't get an amen. But you go on and preach anyhow. He said, you got to learn how to make the most of your current situation. And then I heard him say, art thou loose from a wife? Oh, Lord. Maybe God had to, maybe you had to get a divorce. Sometimes divorced people aren't treated right in the church. Because we treat them as though every divorce is the same. And sometimes divorced people get unfairly kicked. But if divorce, even though God hates it, both in the Old and the New Testament, it is allowed. Because depending on the situation, you can't stay in certain, in certain situations. You can't stay with no abuser. You can't stay with a, 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 a fornicator. You can't stay with somebody trying to kill you or trying to mess with your children. Oh, Lord, he can't stay with a woman. Every time he goes to work, she invites the male man to come in. Little child is born and he's got black hair. She's got black hair. The red, the, the male man. <laughs> He has red hair, and the little child is a red head. Something's wrong. Oh, Lord. Good God Almighty. There are times when you have to get out. He says, so if you've been divorced, you had to have been married to be loose from a marriage. If you've been loose, good God Almighty, seek not a wife 
learn how to be satisfied with your loose state and uh, if God has someone else uh, he'll make a way for you he says the point is uh, don't lose your soul don't get so wrapped up in trying to change things because you may be uh, right where God wants you and he may not even reveal it to you right now and he may have you on hold for the right man or the right woman at the right time but when you try to make something happen and you get ahead of God, you mess up every time. Oh, Lord, some of these couples, oh, Lord, if they told, if they would tell you the truth, they would tell you that the preacher said wait. But when you tell them wait, they said, no, God said it. We know it's God. What can you do with that? You just got to back up and give it time. Oh, Jesus. And I'll tell you something. I'd be glad to be wrong. If I tell you to wait and you don't wait, I'd be glad to be wrong. Hallelujah. If it, if it works out and you live happily ever after. But if it end up being a disaster, you ought to at least say, man of God, you told me to hold my, you told me to put this thing on pause, but I wouldn't even listen to you. You got to know that God is. I can't get an amen. You got to let the Lord be the manager of your life and let God be the manager of your career. He knows how to send you who and what you need when the time is right. Let me hear you say yes. He says, but if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin, since we're talking about young ladies, and back in that, in those biblical times, men really was in the driver's seat as to who got married, as to when they married, and when they didn't. He said, but if that virgin marries, she has not sinned. But nevertheless, you can't view marriage as a panacea. Somebody said, I got married so that I could stay saved. But I'm here to tell you that if a woman is what it takes to keep a Christian man saved, then God would have poured out wives on the day of Pentecost. But he didn't give out wives. He gave the Holy Ghost. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost because if the Holy Ghost don't keep you, she can't keep you. If the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost don't keep her, he can't keep her. Every believer need the Holy Ghost to be their keeper. You're not gonna marry anybody who's just perfect, who's everything you want them to be. With every rose, there are thorns, all human beings are fraught with shortcomings and some of the things they'll change and some of the things you got to learn to live with marriage is an honorable estate instituted of god blessed by saint paul and declared to be holy among men but it's not the cure you've got to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you got to have the Holy Ghost operating on the inside. Let me hear you say yeah. Yeah! Yeah, Lord. Oh, Lord. And he said here, yeah, you'll have trouble in this life. Put your finger there. He said, but this I say then, brethren, whether you're married or not, he says the time is short. Look at your neighbor and say, time is running out. You see, if it was short, when Paul wrote this around AD 60, how much shorter do you think it is now in 2020? He said, the time is short and it remaineth that they that have wives be as though they have none. What is he saying here? He said that time is so short that regardless to your personal situation, you need to live for the Lord. 
you need to make sure that your marriage doesn't interfere with your walk with Christ. Some women and some men have left Jesus under the guise of the Bible says, submit yourself unto your husbands. But let me tell you some ladies, your husband is not God. And if your husband tells you to leave Jesus Christ, you tell that man to take a hike because your husband didn't die for you. Only Jesus died for us. Only Jesus rose again the third day. Oh, lift your hands and praise the Lord. The songwriter said, to cry about he said and if you're rejoicing some good things happen you can't get so caught up in those good things that they turn you away from the Lord and he says if you have possessions that's all right but don't get so caught up in owning those things that you forget the time ain't long Winding up, time is running out. Time, oh, one of these are mornings, it won't be long. You'll look for me, and I'll be gone, going to heaven to sing and shout. Nobody there to put me out. winding up and so I heard him say in my clothes uh -huh. and they that use this world every one of us we who are here since he ain't gonna take us out he ain't gonna come get me until he comes that means I got to have a relationship with the politician. That means I got to have a relationship with a dentist, with a doctor, with the grocery store, with co-workers. That means I got to have a relationship with books, with literature, with movies, with friends. That means I got to be social. I got to interact 
in this world that means I'm gonna hear opinions speculations teachings doctrines things in the world that are antithetical to the teachings of Christ that means I got to know how to navigate to go in and out of these things notice I didn't say last Sunday when I pointed out Oprah and I pointed out these other shows I never said don't watch them I said you got to know what it is that you're looking at so you won't be trapped see you got to make sure since you can't get away from everything you can't divorce yourself from every situation we're not called to be hermits we're not called to live our lives in the bedroom we're not called to live our lives in the sanctuary but that's got to be a marketplace of Christianity you got to know how to be saved and sell cars be saved and be a good nurse be saved and be a good accountant be saved and live it good God on body be saved and a good athlete use the world but don't get pulled in make your money to run your business make your mark get your education do those things but know how far know how far know how far hallelujah this is why, this is why, this is why church attendance is so important see you're out there in the world all week listen to all that stuff all week but when you come back here then you hear woo, something that pulls you back puts you right back on track good God almighty oh go down there people that work in government I really my heart really go out to you because there's an evil agenda oh it's an evil agenda government's pushing everything anti-christian LBGTQ and all the other alphabets that's there's so many different new genders in society all this mess going on and there you are slap dab in the middle of it and you can't quit your job it ain't the will of God. Well, I can't, I can't, I can't do this because uh, the, the, these folks down here ain't saved. No, no, no. That's why you're there. That's why he strategically put you there. He put you there. They, because let me tell you something. No matter how wicked those folk are that you're working around, Christ died for every one of them. And he put you there to be the Jesus example, to perform. The Christian who shows up late is doing God a disservice. You're the, you're the saint, but you're the last one to get to work. You're the saint, but you have the lowest performance. You're the believer, but you're out more than everybody. Every time we turn around, you got a cold. You're the believer, but you're the one, you're the one who always have an attitude about something. You're upset about something. You're not using the world. You're not using it. It's using you. You 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 sucked in. You got to know how as a believer to let Jesus lead you. Hallelujah. Go on to work, but don't cheat. Don't cheat. Amen. Keep your, keep your, keep your, your, your jokes and even your light talk on a certain level. See. Make that money. Buy your nice home. Educate your children. Oh, yeah. Dress up. Walk like somebody, act like somebody, use it, but don't let it suck you in too far. From time to time, you got to take that, that junket for the company. From time to time, 
You want to work that overtime. But now, nah, when it becomes easy for you to miss. Oh, I got, a, I got an opportunity. Just about every Sunday now, I can make some extra money. And all of a sudden now, it's easy for you to miss. As a matter of fact, you'd rather be streaming. Every time you rather stream when you can get here than be here, you're abusing the world system. You ought to always rather be here. For the Bible says that we're not to forsake the assemblings of ourselves together. You got to know how. And you know who will teach you how? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit will show you. He'll tug at you. He'll tug at you. You can be watching a show. And the Holy Ghost will tell you, that's too much. Don't watch that mess. Go on and turn. He'll, but you know what? If he tells you that one time too many and you fail to turn, you know what he'll do? He'll stop telling now you can sit there and watch anything and no conviction. You know why? You, your conscience got sealed. You used it too much. I'll never forget I was in a, a debate with an elected official who was an out-of-the-closet homosexual. I was invited to debate him at a radio station. I was told by some not to go. I took the invitation because I never passed down a, a, an opportunity to put the gospel in different places. I just had a guy to come the other day. They wanted to know, Bishop Wooden, can we take your messages? Can we take your messages and put them on our radio station? But my radio station is secular. We play rock and roll. We play R&B. But I, want your, I, I would love to have you on. I said, where do I sign? He said, oh, it's free. Somebody said, well, do you think you should do that? What? Yes, a whole new market where I can, they can hear this? Right They're tuning in to hear Cardi B, and they end up hearing me. Oh! Well, hey, hey. We're on right now. We went on and did that. Thank God for Gerard McCoy. He set it up. But uh, so I went to the, the, the debate with the man. And now I went there to crush him. And he said something to me that caused me to pull back 50%. I still, you know, did my thing, but not at all. Because you got to use the world, but not abuse it. He said to me before we went on the air, he said, now listen. Don't go too hard on me. Yes, sir. He said, because I agree with you on legislation when it comes down to having some type of voucher so that poor children can get out of poor performing public schools and go to private Christian schools that will give them a better educational level. Say, so I agree with you, Reverend, on that. So why you are uh, sparring with me on this, remember that I'm an elected official and you're going to need me on that. I did what Paul said. I used this world system, but I didn't abuse it. I still told him he was wrong. I still defended marriage as being a union between a man and a woman. I still spoke God's truth on it, but I didn't compromise a thing. And you heard the interview, and you talked about how I mopped the floor with him. You just found out now I went light because he asked me to because I knew I would need him down the road. See, well, wow, you compromised, but you couldn't tell it. So that means we did it right, but you need to leave something so that this ally in another area 
y'all don't hear my preaching, can, can help you. And that is how we got the, uh, they're not called vouchers, what are they called? The uh, Opportunity Scholarship. That's how we got it. That's one of the ways we got it. That this guy was a champ, a homosexual, championed that call. And once we got that passed, guess what? The next time around, he got voted out of office. But we got that done. And now, little poor children, poor kids, poor blacks can get opportunity scholarship grants to get them out of classes where the teachers either don't care or overburdened or the teachers just don't have a choice and them kids are now sitting up in schools learning sitting beside other kids whose parent could afford and they're getting that same education all because of knowing how to use this world system use it but not abuse it I told you this was a different kind of sermon today, but I did holler for you. Now, you have to admit, I, I, I gave you some good ones. We're in the world. We're in the world. Somebody said, that sounds like compromise. Of course it is. You, you comp we compromise every day without being compromised. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego compromised. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. They had to. They went to the king's party, didn't they? They participated, didn't they? They had no problem with any of the festivities until he brought out his stature and it turned religious. And he said, now when you hit a band playing, I want you to worship my image. Now they said, we came, we celebrated, but this we can't do. See, every believer has to have a line. See, my brother, if you don't have a line, then that means you ain't going to associate with the loss at all. So that means you can't win nobody. How you going to win people if you don't engage them? How you going to influence people if you don't talk to them? You, you see the center, and you act like you're too good to even be, be around. You know, people pick up that vibe. So there's no point in you trying to witness to them. You got to know how. I saw the, uh, the ugliest, ugliest, ugliest person. Oh, the ugliest person. Ugliest person. We were somewhere, and wasn't nobody in there but the saints. And I saw the ugliest person. I walked up to her. All was in the same place. I said, God bless you. Good morning. Yes, sir. Good morning. Right. How are you doing? I'm fine. Oh, so pious. Dress down to here. Ooh. Just, um, this happened last week. Just, just as sanctified. Oh, just, I'm, you talk about holy. So holy that the two holy smile at people or to speak to people that they don't know. How you gonna win somebody? Being like that. Paul says, I said these things to you so you won't get distracted. I want to pray. My time's up. I went a little long, but you know, we had a mechanical function, malfunction. I, I, I want to pray for those who want the Lord to keep them in these last and evil days. Who says, I want the Lord to be my anchor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want the Lord to be my strength. I want the Lord to show me how to navigate in this world. It's a good, uh, powerful sermon today. Now what you need to do, you need to go out there and get this one and listen to it again. Right. So you have an understanding of what I was telling you. Amen. Amen. So he sounded to me, he was saying compromise. That's exactly what I was saying. Without being compromised. Use this world system without letting it use you.